This week, Earth joins us to give us his perspective on the new September mobile update and answer if mobile has truly gotten better. Also witness a dissection of the live stream where we ask big questions on the future of RuneScape versus Old School. This is RSBNB Update, episode 740, recorded Thursday, September 5th, 2019. Androids and Authoritarians. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us once again for RSBNB Update. This week, Tannis, you're here as per usual. Thank you, Shane. And also joining us this week to talk about RuneScape Mobile because, well, you've been playing RuneScape Mobile a, a lot since you gained access to it as Earth. Welcome back. <coughs> Hello. So this was a bit of a surprise to everybody, wasn't it? This week, this update. Because it wasn't... Yeah, you asked me like two days ago. Hey, <laughs> Snaros Mobile update. So. Yeah, and, I mean, it, it wasn't mentioned in the month ahead, so we didn't know it was on the way. The uh, reason for that was because they said that when it came down to it, it just wasn't ready to go. And they weren't sure if it was going to be ready for the time that the uh, month ahead video hit. And lo and behold, it was. So that's why we now have the September mobile update, an update designed to, you know, help RuneScape Mobile uh, become better. And this is the headline that we see with this on this post is that RuneScape Mobile just got better. And, you know, you know, last week, Tannis, we were talking about this and we were saying the marketing team has told Jagex to be quiet on this. And lo and behold, yeah. a week later, there's this RuneScape Have Mobile they? Update. Yeah, they weren't allowed to say anything yeah. last week and the week before about the progress of RS Mobile because of marketing team. How d- how do you know this? That's what they outright said on the live stream last week. They said we weren't allowed to talk about it because the marketing team said not to. Yep. Yeah. And they didn't listen to the marketing team? They just said they weren't allowed to talk about it. That's all there was. That's all there was to it. That is terrible. But we got this update this week. No, that... Shut. Do you want to do you want to clarify what you mean? I have a master's in business administration. <laughs> that is a bad thing to do. I can say that. If your marketing team tells you, if I'm understanding this correctly, like if your marketing team tells you to shut up about something, you don't talk about it. Like, yep. ever? And you never tell them that they told you to do that? That's exactly is what that... they said. Someone asked, is there a progress update on mobile when there will be more mobile slots? The exact words from Mod JD, I believe, were, we can't talk about that. The marketing team has told us to be quiet about RS Mobile. No, you don't say that. You say not right now and move on. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Well, I guess that describes the live stream, doesn't it, Hannes? Yeah. Anyways, RS Mobile update. A new UI, a new top-level UI, in addition to a new home screen. And, you know, we, being iOS people, don't have the ability to experience this firsthand. And, you know, I'd, I'd appreciate your insight on the new UI and how it works from the home screen based on uh, where it came from in the past. Earth. Uh, okay, yeah. so uh, where do you want me to start? Are you showing the video? Yeah, I am showing the video right now. And, you know, it, you're, okay. you're standing here in Prif with a <laughs> prayer on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, didn't notice that at first, and then I couldn't figure out how to turn it off, because if I'm not... What, what time stamp are you at? 28 seconds. Okay. And yeah, so on the side there, at this point, I couldn't figure out how to get the the prayer stuff back, and then it just comes back later, and I'm not entirely sure what I did. I think I just, yeah, see, I just accidentally did an emote there, 
and like I'm just trying to like swipe it up and down to get it to swap. I'm not sure if I'm just dumb or like I think you are supposed to be able to scroll that bar on the right side. I wasn't able to. So, I'm just going to watch over there and see what it does. 110 at the but, moment on the video. Yeah, I'm synced up with you. Um <clears throat> Now, it took me a minute to figure out how to collapse the chat, but that's on me, not on Jagex, I think. Um, it was just because of how it was before. It was the top button, and now it's the middle button. Okay, so I've got this settings interface up. I like this better. I think it works better, but I think that the like black background behind it is jarring. Yeah, I was wondering um, about that. And I'm not sure if that's that way for performance. Like, this is really jarring to me. Right, like, where I just it completely teleported. blacks out the screen. Yeah, like that just, it's really jarring to me. And you can see I still have that prayer on. And then I was like, okay, I got to fix this. And so you just turned them all off. Those buttons at the bottom do work for quick prayers. Yeah. Although, why is my health blue? And my prayer purple? Uh, the, the blue one is the summoning points. Oh, I have both. I have the same level in both. That's why I was looking at it. That All makes right. more sense. Okay. Um, so here I am in um, Berthorp. Um, and I'm kind of ambivalent about the... Uh, when I tap on the ground and then I go somewhere, the world map w works great. By yeah, the way. it was surprising to actually see that that it loaded up so quickly. One thing I, I will say with this is I'm very pleased with how the font rendering is looking. The yeah, no, that was something I noticed when I opened it on the computer. Especially the font looks so good, and I would like to. Um, Oh, that's – so it just – it doesn't show my keyboard. I would like to point out that the video at this point is particularly choppy. That's not the game. That's the recording. Because the you game runs the keyboard smooth. up, right? Yeah, because I, I brought that up. All right. Um, <clears throat> but – yeah, and it, it did that after that. I need to reset my phone. I've been having some issues with it. Um, but, like, I would, again, just like I did last time, like to point out that my phone is a flagship. So for it to be running this game super smoothly, I mean, Not it's good that it can, but, like... It shouldn't be a surprise to do that. If any of you listeners ha have a like mid-range Android phone, and what we are interested in how it performs on yours, because it's one thing for it to run great on a Samsung Galaxy S8, right. but that's a top-of-the-line phone. And we also got the same thing with Sirion too, who has a Pixel Three. So yeah, <laughs> and Trekkie also has. I think he has the same phone I do, actually. So, the um, I just took some notes here. Um, I am not a fan of... Okay, Shane, did you watch the shorter video? I did. Did that one I go through all the menus? I think you did, yes. Okay. Um, let me go into that. All right. Real quick. And you know one one other thing I want to say on this is that Yeah, if you if you could go to the smaller video now. Um I can I can walk through that. Just tell me when you start it. All right. I'm ready uh, to go. Cuz that right was now. when I took notes. <clears throat> tell me when to play. Go. All right. So here, um this is pretty much right after I logged in and I put my bank pin in. The bank, it looks better, but the inventory on the side, like, that is my number one issue overall. This escape menu, pause it. All right. 
let's talk escape about, menu. I, I actually just want to inter- interject here on the bank because there's going to be a new bank beta with the near final version of the bank I that here. was going to ship on the 14th. So you'll be able to log in with your mobile client and take a cruise through the bank rework on that. So on the escape menu, what about the escape menu okay. should you take note of? I think this escape menu is wonderful. Um, so the four buttons on the side correspond to F1, F2, F3, F4 on your keyboard, I think. Right. Um, looks like it. Maybe I'm, I'm not actually sure, but like they open up those menus and then you have powers, hero adventures. That's great. Up at the top, you have your coin pouch. Shows how many rune coins you have, keys, and bonds. Um, now, Shane, I sent you a picture on GroupMe earlier. Could you pull that up? Yeah, I have that picture right here. So what okay. what is it with this picture that we want to um, have a look so at? So that is when you hit the button um, on the side. Ooh, okay. Um, and this is my favorite part of the whole thing. I just, and not because of its functionality necessarily, but like, it just looks very visually pleasing to me. And what which... we have is effectively a sidebar ribbon with Rune Metrics World's ribbon controls problem, which I assume is the bug report and then finally lock out. Yeah, and all of those menus, I didn't get it in a video, but they it, it just this screen right here is very aesthetically pleasing to me. Yeah, and and that's I feel like thing. that is one of the biggest issues RS as a whole has with its menus. But, like, this works well. And that is what I am happiest about with this update, I think. Even more so, so than the UI that we have in-game, for example. I'll get to that next. All right. Uh, if you go back to the video. First um, video, or the short one, right? The short one, yeah. All right, resuming. Um, I'm at timestamp 25. Yep, right about there. Okay. Um, oh, I just opened up another the customizations menu, so. interface where you can control animations, pets, and the like. Yeah, like, I think this, again, the black background is jarring. But, I mean, it's quick. Yeah, and, and I mean, they are modal UIs, and that's typically what you do with that on mobile. And I don't know if they'd be able to show these above uh, with the game menu running. But nonetheless, it is uh, a modal UI, so that is to be expected. Okay, I'm at 56. Can you pause? Uh, yes, I can uh, pause at 56. Um, I really don't like how the inventory looks. And that's one thing that I ran into looking at social media and in particular on our Weekly Byte uh, video that I put out this week is that people just said that the way the top interface looks in game, it doesn't feel runescape And it comes yeah, down to I the just... inventory on that. See, and like it just – it's very much not visually appealing to me because it's like – Parts of it, I get that it's supposed to be like your thumb, like you're tapping right. there. But, like, some stuff is centered, some stuff is off-center, and the shadows look weird. Actually, the shadows look really weird. Um, that, that's probably something you can file in a bug report. Well, I mean, I just don't like the circles either. Right, but okay. I think a grid would work better, but... All right, uh, continue. All righty, continuing on with this so, one. All right, now I'm in the equipment screen. Um, and the eh. and and see, I think the thing, it's, the disconnect that you're experiencing with that is that when you normally look at the equipment screen in game, you have the character layout of how your character looks. Yeah, see, that was what was jarring for me. But now even just looking at it paused, like, the icons are bigger than the boxes. Which, yeah. I mean... And, I mean, that'll probably be thing. fixed, right? And, I mean, this isn't... This is mobile beta still, so room to go. Yeah, I mean, I think this is... I would love to have a character representation there, but 
size is what we're uh that's that's exactly it running up against that there and that there's really not that much room to work with in horizontal or rather landscape mode as you have it now all right so if we continue this is one of my least favorite things the skill UI. when it goes to skills all right um and see this is something i think that many players who are coming from the desktop side would be concerned about because there's these huge gaps in between the skill panes, which many people don't have on their desktop UIs. And Just make the- them bigger and make it... See, another thing I'm concerned about is this recorded at what, like... Well, hold on. I can tell you the... A very big resolution, I can tell you that it right now. It recorded at 2220 by 1080. So, like, again, flagship phone. Um, because I am super curious about how they do it with smaller and slower phones. But for me, at least, I think this looks bad. Yeah, because there's just I so much should... open space there, right? And then there's so much at the bottom. And I don't know how much of that is because of my phone and how much of that is the design. Uh, continue. All right, continuing on, and see, folks, this again, is what we're just pause it what, when it gets to the next. What we're what we're seeing with this is that yes, this works and it's playable. It's definitely very playable, but at the end of the day, it's still a beta. So, mm-hmm. all right, I'm looking at your spell. I, I think now. the spells are in a good place. Uh, yeah, you can because actually keep playing through it onto the quest one because I mess with it a little bit. Because they actually fit you inside the boxes. The, and they're yes. Large enough and the space. And you can collapse everything that you don't need. That's actually really quests, nice. I think the quests interface on the side is good. I think there's too much space. But, like, that font looks amazing. Prayers are exactly what I expected. Yeah, that was actually updated this week. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I did actually go through some of this on the desktop side. So, overall, I mean, would you feel comfortable playing this on your own right now? And utilizing this UI, would it be pleasant enough to to use? Depends on what I'm doing. Okay. Um, How would you feel about think... giving it to a new player? No. And there's the reason why this is still in beta. What would you say the biggest reason for that is? Granted, I took like a two-year break, but I'm still confused by a bunch of stuff. And it's not like game gameplay wise it's interface wise hey tannis we just had a discussion on that <laughs> we did on some um, of that <laughs> on the settings ui you can access yeah i that. mean the settings yeah. ui i think is a whole nother thing um, patreon.com slash rsbnb if you want to hear about that but um it just like if i were to approach this as a new player i would be overwhelmed because there are so many buttons everywhere, and I don't... Are they doing a Tutorial Island, but, like, for mobile? They are doing Tutorial Island as it is, and then after Tutorial Island, you land in Berthorpe. But there's nothing for mobile-specific... For mobile players, though. As far as I know, no, we haven't seen the what only the mobile thing onboarding is, is going to look like the little help menu right now yeah i mean obviously they can't do this now because it's not in a um i mean and anywhere near a finished state as far as the interface but like i think if they put in a tutorial like um, what was it that teleported everyone to lumbridge years ago like the first time they logged in after something um the world event i think was it yeah i think it's the first world event i can't remember i'm sorry i feel like it was after 
maybe it was after EOC? Oh, that could be at Combat Academy to learn about EOC. Like, they just teleported everyone to Lumbridge from wherever they were. Yeah, Um, and, and I mean, I think there's a whole other discussion to be had about mobile onboarding specifically for returning players. Yeah, I think what is going to make this successful for new players is a good tutorial. If it's players who are already playing on their computers, yeah, they're going to play it. Like, if they want to. Yeah. Or they're just going to be on their computer. And that's Returning players, I feel like returning players with the nostalgia is where they're going to get most of their people from. And that's the market that they need to capture. Right. Now, obviously, I don't have – I would hope that they've done market research studies on this, right? But, like, my gut feeling is that that is going to be who they're – that should be who they're trying to get back. Um, I think think so. And if they don't make it easy to get into, then – People are going to get frustrated after about two minutes and then never come back. Yeah, and that's what this week's update was designed to do for the new players, was change the new player experience. And we'll talk more about that in just a couple minutes. So I think that's pretty much it for the mobile UI, unless there's anything else specifically you want to say about it. I know we touched on the home screen Um, and the way it's laid out. Um, What do you think of the color scheme? And for those watching, not watching on the video version... It is a gold color scheme with bands for the buttons on the side. What do you think of that color scheme? Um, let me pull the video up and look at it. Oh, um, I don't know if it's because I'm in Priftiness, but I think it's less the color scheme and more the transparency. Okay. All right. Because in Priftiness, like, I couldn't see that, but... Um, let me compare this to the other video where I'm in Berthorp. Yeah, see, it's fine in Berthorp, but it's just not, when it's on something of a similar background color, like, I literally couldn't see it. That's why I had so much trouble, I think, at first, right. when I, and that, in that first shorter video. And that sidebar that you have is actually customizable on the right-hand side. Yes, it is. That's I realized that as I was closing it out, that's the ribbon button in the um, still that I sent you. Yeah. So that's something. So that I'm glad that. that they're adding customization. That was one of the best updates of – I think it was even earlier this year we got that ribbon update on the PC side, allowing us to customize ribbons and the like. So, all right. Um, chat is really good. I like where it's at now because it now collapses to a smaller – my biggest – irritation with it before is it would show numbers up there and it was like for it seemed to be inconsistent but i'm not actually sure right because you think uh, normally that would be notifications Mm-hmm. but like it could be someone talking in the clan chat it could be a private message who knows um i like how it's collapsed now because it feels a lot more unobtrusive than it was before and you can have a bigger view and a smaller view. The bigger view before took up like a third of the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and- I think this is in a good place. And it doesn't... You couldn't see it because it was only recording the game. But like typing was fine on this one. It wasn't um, before. Another thing that I thought of... My biggest irritation about logging back in is having to swap apps to the authenticator to get the code Mm. and then going back. Now, Shane, is it possible to push that authentication somehow? No, that because like I know Microsoft can do it, but I also use Microsoft's authenticator. Yeah, that 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 would just because it's. The Google Authenticator standard, you really can't do that. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's a minor annoyance I have, but it's like 
I would say moderate annoyance I have actually. I I wish there were another way to authenticate yourself on mobile. Yeah. Um and and like maybe you could they talked I mean, about hooking into like a fingerprint sensor, the biometric yep. stuff, but it, that's it's difficult because they want to support both iOS and Android, so it's going to be different. Why is that difficult, though? Isn't it just... I, like, I honestly don't know how it works, and that's just what they said. I think that would be fantastic. Um, because that is... It is a, a an annoyance um, because it like makes me wanting to play this like a solid uh, two three minutes of me having to go jump through hoops Ooh. when I know that it's already on my phone. Right. And then I have to go back, and then if it's in that like ten seconds before it refreshes. Uh, bit i gotta wait because i know it's gonna take that long to get back to where i was you know right uh tannis do you Um, have any questions about the mobile ui uh that might be able to get answered here because i think i don't have any um more on this and we can move on to other aspects of the big update this week yeah i think it's going to be a while until uh before i get my hands on it so um just gonna hope it's in a good place by then yeah, and yeah. they did say they did have a bit on iOS at the end. They said that no, they did it. Yeah, they they said at the end no, of the they news post, it. they said yes, you read that right. We've seen your interest in an iOS beta for Inkscape Mobile. Good progress is being made. However, there's still a little bit of work. We're ready until we're ready to present the iOS beta to you. Also, stay tuned for the next mobile update. Hmm. I do have. Three little notes to add. Um, All right. That home menu, that new one that I really liked. Mm-hmm. Now, this is this is a very small, this is going to be a finishing touch thing, but it opens instantly, and it's a little jarring, actually. Um, and also, like, if you just touch it, it opens. Like, if you touch it and then try to slide off, it's already open. Um, so maybe, like... I mean, I, I finishing touches, right? Yeah. Um, combat seems to be good. I didn't go into combat, but I didn't notice any big changes on that menu that pops up. I love the stuff at the bottom, the bars. Um, I think that's a lot easier than numbers for health and adrenaline, anyway. Yeah. Um, Need to figure out the side menu. I don't know if it's because I'm dumb or what. Um, yeah, it did look like just, you were having some issues with controlling that because at yeah, one point in really the video you got different stuff up than you did at the beginning. And it's frustrating because that's where the um, bar at the bottom, the home or the navigation bar or whatever it's called, that's where that is. And when I swipe up and down on that, it causes that to pop out. So. Hmm. That was kind of frustrating and not intuitive, but. Um, One thing I do really like is that when you tap on the, the square, it shows you a bit of a preview of where you're going next. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice if we could have that as an option on the PC, I think. And here I am advocating for more options, Tannis. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, choice isn't a bad thing. Just don't put it in multiple places, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. But how are people going to find it if it's not everywhere? <laughs> you, could be, you could be revealing the very key part of the monthly bit that we just recorded that... Uh, was a bit of a head scratcher from time to time. Anyways, let's talk about the buff bar because this is something that was also changed this week, and this is one of the features that the PC players also gain access to. The buff bar can now display up to 50 buffs at a time, and the way they're displayed is based on priority. 
I don't know exactly how that priority is defined, but the biggest thing about this update, in addition to the 50 and the priority aspect, is that you can now reorient your buff bars so you can have them vertically if you want. You can have them as tall or as thin as you want as well. So in theory, what you could do is you could have all your buff bars lined up and stacked on top of one another, or you could just have them in a column on the side of your screen if that's how you prefer to play. And for anybody wondering how to customize these, you just go into the edit layout mode and tick the buff bar. You'll be able to move the buff bars around and customize them uh, to your heart's desires. And, you know, this is part of that advanced layout edit mode that has, as we counted last night on the bit when we were recording that, had 25 plus options in it. So buff bar is near the top. So just tick that and you'll be able to start customizing it. Um, Anybody have any concerns with the buff bar? Any thoughts on it going forward? It's nice that you're going to be able to... I tried to organize mine and my interface when I was messing with that long time ago, and I just it's sort of just floating there, so it's going to be good to be able to actually, uh, you know, put that where I want it, right? Yeah, and, and you know, that's what we want the most out of these uh, UI enhancements, and Tycho was doing some playing around with this, and he found, or rather put together a screenshot of his buff bar, and he managed to get 34 active buffs up at one time. And I don't know what his ordering on this is, but you can see all the various prayers and whatnot. He was going for 50 on this, so I don't know if he got there. Another person in Clan Quest got up to 42, so... Yeah, hold on. I saw something earlier. Okay. Uh... I have a question on this, and I'm not sure if it's because I have running on a high DPI display, but the text on the buff bars was incredibly blurry for me. Did either of you guys find that? Um, the mouse over text? No, just the text showing how many minutes or whatnot was left. I was different because um, we're not used to like the the M, right? Like it, it did look different, but I thought it was a little more clear actually. I just bigger... looked at it on mobile. I'll take a look at it on the desktop client real quick, though. Yeah, because I, uh... I found it blurry, but I don't know if that was just it was. Was the upscaling or not? But yeah, I can't say that mine's blurry or anything. That would be my only concern with that. Yes, it's blurry. Okay, so that so that is definitely something that should be fixed going forward. Then, because I mean, you don't want to have blurry text uh, on something that is a buff bar, and you know, being able to read it. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's blurry or it's it's not clear. I don't know if it's like because of the background it's on. But uh I don't know, it's hard to say. Yeah. Uh would I be remiss if I requested the ability to combine both the debuffs and buffs into one bar? Uh I would like that. <laughs> You know where I'm going with that, right? Still, and yeah. it just puts the buffs yeah. first, and then the debuffs, right? Yeah. Like and then, that, that was what I was thinking the whole time you were talking about this, because right. Sto does it well. It's a Star Trek Online. And I could go one further step, and I could say it'd be nice to be able to scale up these icons, but then we're into the whole <laughs> territory of interface scaling, and we know how that debate goes. We like it. Jagex says they like it, but it's something that... Apparently can't be done easily. And the no Tannis, that would be great for you. It would be, but it'd take too long. It costs too much. No. <laughs> no. No. All righty. Also this week in the, um, in the new mobile update, and you know, this is something that also kept giving for everybody, not just mobile players, was new basic abilities so people who are starting up a character free to play will be able to have more combat abilities to play with they added lesser versions of several basic abilities so that you'll be able to build a full action bar rotation and alongside this mutated abilities have been renamed to greater 
abilities. And, you know, this is something I think that we needed for a long, long time because it felt as though that there's too much of a gap in terms of the combat abilities that were present. And as you were leveling up, you had to wait and you had to, you know, effectively dive into the deep mystery of what is EOC revolution action bars to know what's best. So hopefully we'll uh, progress down that track with the tutorial people who give you action bars. And they also added the eat food ability to the constitution skill book, which will eat the first item of food in your backpack. Yeah, I yeah, I've heard mixed mixed reviews on that. That it's All right. working well for some and it's not working well for others. So, do do people carry different kinds of food? Well, I, that's kind of what I'm wondering. With it too, I just have like ten thousand summer pies in my bank, and that's what I use for food. And it's on my X key, and then. Like, I have 10,000 of those, unless I need Saradomen brews for something. Why would I use something else? Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I yeah, use and, and, different and, ones depending on what you're doing, but I wouldn't have multiple kinds at one time. And and for all intents and purposes, yeah. this is the introductory eat food ability, because you are going to put a summer pie on your action bar and just use that all the time. Probably. And they yeah, this, and one thing they go. said, they said, use this one with caution. But there was also an issue this week where it wasn't responding immediately because it was on the global cooldown. And apparently that resulted in some people dying. Oh, God, let's not touch the global cooldown. Jesus. <laughs> Holy cow. Um, we know what happened last time we huddled with global geez, cooldowns. Man. Yeah. What happened the last time they muddled with those? You don't want to. Uh, re- re- reprisal, do. reprisal drowned. It was. It was what? Less... <laughs> I don't they, know they what lost, this means. They lost a whole, a whole ability. Just it, it just vanished. It's gone. It, it was a whole mess. It, it was a whole other thing. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But no, the best meme I, I saw was like. Like it was like a mom and she's playing with the kid in the pool, you know, and I forget what what they had on that. Like the mom was like they had Jagex written on that and then um that was a sigil update, that's what it was. That was what she, they re- wrote on the kid, like holding her up. And then over in the corner is this other kid her other kid who is like blah, blah, all you see is like bubbles and shit and it said reprisal. <laughs> <laughs> It was good. <laughs> it pretty much summed it up. But um, this is actually uh, this is actually a really good a really good update. Um, because you you don't notice it unless you have a, I mean unless you're low leveled or you have an alt. But um, man, coming up with with my alt was kind of a bummer for a really long time uh, when it came with combat because yep. I just didn't have enough abilities yep. to to do anything um so this is actually really cool this is this is great um for new players and people with alts and next up is the prayer uh user interface swap they added a filter button so that you can filter out prayers that you don't have or you don't have the requirements to use and then they added this big huge button that when you press it it will show you the stats of all your prayers which is something we haven't had since before EOC. It shows you how much prayer is being drained. We did have that before on the buff bar, but now it'll show you all of the ways your stats are modified. So if you activate turmoil, it'll show you the increase to your melee accuracy and strength as well as defense, which is something... To your, to your what accuracy? Your Shane? melee accuracy and defense. Your what? Oh, for th- May- melee? All right, all right. It'll show you your stats for your prayer changes, which is something we haven't had since before EOC, because that used to exist, but it disappeared with EOC, and it's finally back. So I'm very pleased with this one, and this is my favorite part of the update, just because I like to get in there and see what exactly all the modifiers are happening to all the stats. So that's my favorite. We also had the new achievement tracker, or as they call it, the activity tracker, and that's something I'm going to have some hard time explaining the differences between because you know if you open your adventures ui right now the top 
far right tab is called Activity Tracker. And this will allow you to add pretty much any activity under the sun to it. You can add your current Slayer task to it. You can add a daily challenge. You can add any of your skill goals. You can add the D&Ds. And let's just say it's set to woodcutting. As you're woodcutting, it will update the amount of XP remaining to your goal. And, you know, previously you'd have to go into the skill panels to do this. And the whole idea behind this is that this activity tracker is to resemble an objectives menu that you find in other MMOs. So I'm a fan of this one. My only concern with it is that some of the buttons for removing the activities from the list and reordering them is a little bit weird because if you want to lower things in terms of their position on the list, you got to click the down arrow and then click each individual thing that you'd like to lower. If you want to raise things, you click the up arrow. And if you want to delete things, you click the trash can. And I don't know if it's just a limitation, but in that kind of scenario, I'd much rather have a drag and drop kind of mentality imposed on this. But that's just one niggle that I have with this. But beyond, but beyond that, I think this is uh, another good part of this week's update that many people aren't going to see, but it's going to be a thing that everybody interacts with who is just starting to play RS or is coming back with it. Because with this, they also added a whole bunch of paths for the new player experience, and those will be tracked through here. And these are ways to get players started and get them involved in doing things in the first few hours of RuneScape, as we talked about in last week's live stream. So the activity tracker looks really good, I must say, except for that one so tiny thing. How did you know to do that? Like, how did you know that's how it worked? Because I watched them do it on the live stream last week. Oh, Okay. Would someone know it if you hadn't? Would you know it if you hadn't seen it? I'm going to say probably not. Okay. I should actually get somebody to sit down and try and reorder this list who hasn't seen this UI before. I was just curious. I don't I mean, even know what it is. Do you want me to do it right now? Yeah, yeah. Open your adventures menu and go to activity tracker. Then okay. from there... Do you have any skill goals set, or do you have any Slayer tasks currently? I have Dagonoth. So you can add that to your, your oh. adventure tracker. How do, I, how do I go back? How do I go back? And see, this is the thing that we were just talking about, is that it's, it's a good system... But it just feels a little bit rough around the edges, I guess we could say, on this. Wait, it showed me three of them. Where did they go? I clicked on one of them just to see details about it. And now I... Do I hit the trash can? Okay, clicking the trash can does nothing. What? Where did the other goals go, Shane? Can I only have one at a time? No, you can have up to... I think you can have up to five. Where the hell did it go? There were three. So I think what we've discovered here is that despite this being a good system, once you get it set up, there are definitely some interaction issues that need to be smoothed over and resolved on this. What does that button do? Click on yeah, paths. It's... That takes me to achievement paths, which is under the achievements menu and the heroes menu. Um... Oh, clear path. Okay, let's see what that does. Okay, I cleared path in achievement paths, which is something completely separate. And now I have three of them again. And if you go back to the adventures menu and go to the activity tracker... Okay, I just did one because apparently... 
<laughs> I never did give it a rest, which is false. I've used that before. So then it just pops me back. Wait, but this is achievement paths. This isn't even... What, what if you click the trash can icon and then... Nothing happened. Okay, I'll click on Menaphos trash. Okay, it maybe it's already there. But um, what happens uh, if you click the Slayer, the Slayer icon at the bottom left there, at the bottom right? Okay, let's Slayer add task. that there. Okay, there it is. Okay, so if I click on that and then I click, I can't. I still can't get rid of it. But now I have another one. I guess what it's doing is it's like, hey, here are three things that you should do. And then you click one, and then uh, you're bound to it until you go to... How did I get there? Um, I mean, it's it's here. And then I have to hit clear path. And then... Now you just got your Dagonoth Slayer Oh, that's task fuzzy. There. And then I get rid of... I can get rid of that. So this is achievement paths. And then there are other ones? So... How are you feeling right now? I don't understand. Right okay. I'm just feeling very confused and lost. So there you go. There is someone who has never looked at this interface before. Um, <laughs> see the, my, the, how my character is on the ground right now. That's how I feel. Completely passed out and on the floor, lying down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Herbert is looking at me. Oh, on Herbert. Here, Shane, you can you can put Herbert. this you can put this up. Um, Okay. And there we have it, folks. And, you know, as I mentioned, it's a good UI once you get stuff added to it, but adding new stuff to it, figuring out how to add stuff to it does take a little bit of time. So I don't know. I think we could definitely smooth out some of the rough edges around that one. Uh, agreed. And last but not least, all of Burthorpe and Taverly has been – reworked with this update so that they are once again distinct places and they're separated by forced and you know Burthorpe is more of the starting location where you learn about combat Taverly of course remains to have its focus on summoning and herb lore skill tutors have been shifted around moved to various other places in game where they might make more sense such as uh, the woodcutting tutor where he hands out the woodcutting skill cape North of Falador, just to name a couple of examples with that. And, you know, overall, I much prefer the two towns separated compared to how they were previously because, you know, with them separated now, it just creates more of a split between them and it restores their unique identities as it always used to be back in the day, I feel. And I'm a f mm -hmm. fan of that. So, yeah, um, I'm glad they split those up again. And, you know, from based on what we have here on the video, I started my run through Birth Orp and Taverly about 30 seconds after you did. And we were on the same world doing this at the same time. So we could have actually run into each other if we were going different ways, believe it or not. And we didn't. No, we did not. So that's the big RS Mobile update and the update for the new player experience this week. There's also a bunch of patch notes in terms of mobile updates in particular, um, text changing positions on the character interface, changing the visual appearance of the currency pop-up, and made text use the correct skin color on many, many interfaces. More, of course, can be found in the patch notes linked at update.rsbnb.com. And also mentioned that logging out of a big game hunter encounter will now decrease the creatures remaining in the instance. And when you edit the positions of the buffs and debuffs bar, it will be aligned to the top of the header when you're editing. That was, yeah, that's good. Yeah. That was the part that was annoying. Bingo. 
Bingo. So now you can, if you just want one row, you get one row with the header, and there you go. Okay. So you guys ready to talk about the live stream? If we must. Yeah, we must, I think. (laughs) So there's going to be a beta for the bank placeholder system that's going to be arriving on the 14th of this month. And they said this will be effectively what's going to launch. And with that, what that means is that if you go in there and you find issues that are showstoppers, report them, talk about them, shout about them, and, you know, uh, they want to effectively see this launch at the end of the month. But if there's issues, it will be held back. But that doesn't mean that... uh, it was initially intended to be that way. And on this, Maud Osborne said, if people feel like they've lost a little bit of trust on us, that hurts us. We'll accept it and absorb it. We're sorry that it, it may have launched a week or two later than expected when it comes to any update that they're talking about. See, I don't think delays should <laughs> – I don't think those are the problems. I don't think – I don't really think that should affect your trust in Jagex. No. I, I mean, the, because you want updates like, to ship that are good. Yes, exactly. Um, we, you're going to lose a lot more um, faith when something ships broken. Um, that I think is, I mean, because then that, that that gives that gives like, um, I mean, it just gives fuel to the, the critics. Um, yeah, like and based on what we really just learned here. The activity tracker part of the update, though it was probably tied into the new player experience, probably shouldn't have shipped as it is because Earth here has been playing since, what, 2004, 2005? Took a break, came back. 2004, thank you. Came back earlier this year. 2004 came back earlier this year and is having problems with these interfaces. Right, and and what do you think, I mean, when you think about it, like, what's going to do more damage? Like, the... What happened with the sigil update or the bank rework coming a couple weeks later? Sigil update. Um, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. It doesn't bother me if something's a little delayed. Um, yeah. In and fact, I, I think that's usually a good thing because they, they caught it before it got out the door. And we were talking about I this think... in pre- – oh, go ahead. I think the biggest thing, just this is kind of an in general thing about Jagex delivering um, news about updates. When I came back a few months ago, I couldn't tell you a damn thing that had happened in game in the past two years. Maybe even closer to three, right? Yeah. And I was just running around. Um,. I'd heard terrible, terrible things about Menophos. Um, so I just never went there. And then a few weeks ago, I was like, you know what? Damn it. I'm going to get my quest cape back. And I did. And I was like, this wasn't that bad. It wasn't my favorite piece of content in the game, but I didn't think it was that bad. But I also wasn't promised... Whatever it was they promised. People thought they were getting another Prif, but it turned out to be a mid-level city. Yeah, I wasn't That's, promised yeah. that. Like, I I think the atmosphere there is pleasant. Um, and like, I mean, it's, it's a neat concept. It's not something that I'm probably going to go back to often. But like, doing that and getting the reputations up, it was pretty neat. Like, and it wasn't nearly as bad as people chain had led me to believe it was. Well, it was initially like that, and they didn't add the quest bit of increasing the amount of reputation again until last year. Yeah. yeah. A, I mean, really, Menifals just came down to people being time-gated and stuck into a piece of content that they didn't particularly want to have to do. Um, yeah. Because that's... it was mid-range, you know? Oh, yeah, I didn't think it was that, that was bad annoying. either. Um, it's just the way that you were stuck there for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I was there for a solid two weeks. It's gorgeous, like, though. Go anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. And I love the quest to get to it. I mean, does that, oh, does yeah. that count? That's something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, you know, I, I think this is what we were talking about earlier, and this was in pre-show. We need to have a frank discussion at some point. 
of whether or not RuneScape wants to be a game that goes for big updates like expansions or if people are going to be continually getting hung up over having updates week to week. I don't think they should tell anyone anything and then just deliver content. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of the way Sto does their month ahead roundups. Yeah, like they have that don't every year they do like a year looking ahead. A six month and ahead then, infographic, yeah. And then that's it. Like I mean I assume that's uh Um That's probably not possible with RS. Say. Yeah, I just see in an ideal world I think that would be good, but I don't think they'd have to do it gradually, but you know. I don't think they could ever reach that point. Yeah. But yeah, it's too in the game work. the game devs are too intertwined with the community on that. And let's get actually on to the next part of this cuz this ties in nicely. The annual survey question was asked, what's the point of doing a survey if you're not actually going to release what's on the annual surveys? It's not a bad question. <laughs> I mean, I knew the um, answer before he even said it. Right. But... Wait. The answer is that the surveys are aimed to scientifically see where the community is at and what type of updates should be launched. That's what they say about the surveys, and obviously um, I think players have a different perspective is that the top polled content in the survey should be brought into game, no ifs, ands, or buts. And with that, I think that's another discussion we can have is that are we at the point where Jagex should be determining the direction or should we be soliciting more player feedback? And if we're wanting Jagex to determine the direction, let's see some of that passion and drive on stages we talked about last week. Have them jump up and down on at RuneFest on stage, not to the level that, you know, Steve Ballmer used to do at Microsoft. Developers, but... developers, developers. But you need somebody to get excited up on stage and not just have it be a press briefing. Well, well now yeah. you have to play the video, Shane. Come no. on. No, you definitely. have the technology, don't you? Of course I do, but I want to focus on what's do right it. here, do right it. now, with this. And that's 120s and the survey. Because this was a very contentious part of the live stream. I think it was a setup, if you ask me. What do you mean it was a setup? It's the Cambridge Mob, man. It's a setup. <laughs> it's a setup, and construction is, is the mark. It's getting hit, dude. It's being taken out in a body bag, putting cement shoes on it because they're trying to tie it to 120. But they don't want to do it. They, they done threw it. They're swimming in the fishes. It's, the Cambridge Mob got it, dude. So Got I it. have no idea what's happening right now. Um, uh, the Cambridge mob is our term for conspiracy th- theories that the players come up with. Mm-hmm. That the Cambridge mob is behind everything that the players come up with. That is a conspiracy theory that is just so off the wall. Well, I mean, that's that's reasonable, I think. Um, I think you'd be a fool not to believe in the Cambridge mob, Shane. But... Um, uh, what what are they what are they angry about right now? I'm saying that construction got set up like like it got set up for it a hit it because it they're built, like ooh built up. Well, they're they're trying to say well we would love to do a construction rework, but what do you think about it going to 120, knowing that people will freak out about that and say no we don't want it, and then I'll give them an excuse to not do it. That's Can I I just say something what I think the players are actually at? at What I think the players' stage is actually at? I think the players want 120s. And and I think construction rework with 120 will still pull high. Players, yes, a lot of them will say they want 120s. But you can consistently run into the, but there's no content to 120. It shouldn't be 120 if there's no content. Yeah. Um, and there's not going to be content. I got, I got news, news flash. It's not going to be content. So 
that's why I say it was set up to fail. Because they know the players want it. So if you know you want it, then why are you going to tie it to something that could potentially be controversial or contentious? And they said that the reason for pulling 120 with construction together was that they're taking a similar stance to what they did with Anachronia rather than just pulling, say, a high-level agility course or new Slayer creatures or Fossil Island. Pulling the, they want to pull the final end product with this and see how players react to that. Yeah, well, that didn't happen with mining and smithing because they wanted to do a mining and smithing. And that's exactly where the Q&A went next. They said mining and smithing turned out really well, but two years of dev time to create it, and it ultimately didn't keep players engaged as long as the two-year dev time warranted. What do they want? What is successful to them? Because I think the mining and smithing rework was probably the most the best update I've seen I, at least in the in the last three, four years, if not ever. And I mean, it's it was a big change, and I think it worked well. And yeah. <laughs> it didn't really add anything. Well, it kind of added something new, but it didn't... It didn't... Uh, what am I trying to say here? I don't get why keep players playing as long as it warranted. I don't get why that was their... Um, metric for success because it's never seemed to me like it was to keep people playing it just reordered it into a logical like level now and then added some stuff in to compensate yes yeah and my perception with the mining and smithing rework was that it kept players playing for too long in that they didn't anticipate the economic side effects that it was going to cause with ores and bars well, and that, and see that this is the problem, man. Um, and I don't, I don't know why this is happening right now, um, because we were uh, Jagex was on was on a winning streak. I mean, this whole year until lately, um, and it, you're just it, it feels like I'm hearing hearing them talk out of both sides of their mouth, and I don't get that because it, it's not necessary. Um, but here, but here's the problem, like. So is he saying that we're not going to get updates like that anymore? Um, if if that's the case, all right, just be frank and tell people that, hey, you're looking at Treasure Hunter updates and um, little weekly, you know, little weekly activities. And that's what you're going to get. And to be fair, So that though, we can at least decide. To be fair, though, we're not going to a world where it's just going to be Treasure Hunter updates and live ops, as they call it. In terms of that, and this is something that's actually going to be happening after this show is published, is that we're going to be seeing dev diaries about the new team structure within the company. And I suspect that that might have something to do with the shift that we've seen. And, you know, it's been a while since we've had a team restructure on that front. And when those happen, it can be disruptive. But on the mining and smithing rework, there was a way to have it take less than two years to create. And that was called to get it in order and actually ship a piece of content that was similar to the first design document. And if you compare the first design document with the design document that actually shipped, the differences that existed between those were there. But they weren't groundbreaking. The core mechanics remain the same. So what effectively happened is we had betas and we had play tests and we had a design rework around a system because the players didn't feel it was comfortable. And if they didn't do that design rework and they didn't do all the play testing that they did, it would have shipped in the more preferable time span. And, you know, once again, this is another question that needs to be asked and players need to ask them themselves is, are you willing to let go and give the reins back to Jagex? Yes, it's been it's been seven years since EOC And at the same time, the question on that front to the company is, are you willing to take our trust, the people who will give it to you, and create grand stuff? Or are we going to keep walking forward on eggshells, playing it safe? Well, It's a discussion that everybody (laughs) needs to have, 
and that d- well, direction I, needs to be determined. I mean, I get your point. It's just that when they did build up some political capital, what did they do with it? They nerfed things. They took things away. They did not create anything. All they did was piss a bunch of people off. So we did. We gave them the reins. We're like, here you go. And then we got and the hunter what did nerf. They do? We got Anachronia. We got hunter nerf. And in my and view, hunter could... nerf and Anachronia balanced each other out. But the farming not nerf. My book. But the farming nerf and the lack of content since Anachronia has created a net deficit. Right. And I. I just don't know why – like I don't know why that's happening because I, I felt like they were they were in a good place. They were doing good things and then I just all hell broke loose. I don't, you know what they need to do? I don't get it. They need to become the top curators of the Reddit slash RuneScape community and only allow the feedback that is positive to their company to go through. Uh, Are you like a fascist or something? Well, if they like. want to, if they want to have a, <laughs> if they want to have a source of opinion out there that is something that p- players can come by and see, that is exactly what they want to do, and that will create a more positive opinion. That's what they need to do because you can't so, have CMN Square never online. happened, right, Shane? You're going to force people then to vote with their dollars and become a cancel culture. If they, if people feel like they have no input to the game whatsoever, they're going to be like, "All right, well, I don't have anything to do with it anyway. I'll buy it when I want, and I'll let it go when I want." Yeah, it's. Kind I don't of have any. I don't have any agency over it. I have nothing. I have no input. But should players so, have input over a game? Yeah, that they of, play? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Should they? But the point is we should yes. have to. They should be doing the right thing. Yes, things. that's it. The play the the, the company should be making we that can't decision. Trust them to do it. The company but should be But we can't trust decision. them to do it. They keep up, man. Like we 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 want that, yes. But when we do it, they nerf Hunter in half. They take the they they take the farm. The other what the number two update in the last three years, and and they take an axe to that. So well, I got my uh, own stuff to say on the farming changes. Well, I mean, I, I know you do, but I'm just, <laughs> you know, I, we, yeah, we want them to lead. We want them to do that stuff. But every time we give them the car keys, they drive it in a ditch, and I, and I don't like why. I don't know why. Why does old school work and this doesn't? Why does their community? You know, I was actually thinking of asking that question to you earlier when we were talking about this. I see, and I don't know if I had the answer to that, man. I would be advocating for it all day long because I don't know how they did it. I don't, especially I don't know how they did it with people that are like the most cynical. Toxic players in all of RuneScape. But okay. somehow they made it work. How many changes do they make to it? Well, they're polls that they do have yeah, like I mean, 20 yeah, plus options. Like constantly. And, and it's continuous. Like it's. I don't know why it works, but it works there. They have a player base that's, what, three times the size of RS3, right? Uh, Probably. Let, let, let me check that right now. I mean, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's considerably bigger. That's probably why diversity of opinion. All right, so if we go, if we go month to month, um, OS Mobile launches in November of last year, and it shoots up to ninety-seven thousand on the month from fifty-eight thousand. At that time, EOC was twenty-two thousand. Right now, OS Mobile and OS Regular are 72,000. Standard RuneScape is 19.2 thousand. Oh, shit. That is... So it's nearly four, four times. times. Yeah. And is that current numbers or uh, daily September, average? September 2019. Damn, average so far. Man. Daily average for Dude. September 1st oh. was... 20,000 huh. EOC, RuneScape 3, 74,000 old school. Okay. That's bad. At what point are we just costing them money at this, at the, at this point? 
Oh, well, no one, point, well, it's well, no one, it's costing them money. Well, no one about a month and a bit when the financials for the last year come out. I'm going to venture to say if it wasn't for MTX, RS3 would probably be a goner. Uh, 80,000, dude, to 20? Shit. I didn't know it was that, like, that dramatic. I thought it was probably maybe two to one, and I thought a lot of that had to do with Twitch, but and, four to one? Keep in mind also they don't have heuristics-based boss hey. bot removal there. Hey, can you okay. check uh, oh, June good. and July? Sure. Man. Of this year? Yeah. Uh, June and July of this year. July 2019, RS3, 23.3, old school, 72.5. And June, 20,000.4 for RS3, 75,000 on the nose for old school. Wow, okay. I was wondering how much summer affected it. So there's a thriving, a thriving community, like four times our size, that has legitimate influence on the game's development and it seems like everything is working over there. I hmm. I don't know. I mean, what can we say about that? And this is why last year at RuneFest the old school talk left two of us speechless. Yeah, like I legitimately don't know what this means, but I, it just gives me a really uneasy feeling. You know what I mean? Like I just because because on one hand you're saying, oh, don't give anybody, don't give the players any input on anything, but that's the completely opposite of what old school's doing, and they're kicking our ass, they're eating, they're taking our lunch money, man. I heard it. You almost. <laughs> Keep in mind, though, when I say that, I come from the culture where I prefer that my operating system effectively just tell me what to do with Mac OS. And I prefer most of my games to be that well, way, too. That, is that maybe because you're an authoritarian? I don't yeah, consider myself an authoritarian. To tell you what to do. <laughs> well, that's kind of the nature of it, right? Like, you, just, you want the authority to tell you what you should be doing. I don't know. And That's... this is something we can maybe expand on later because, I mean, it's clear we don't have any answers today to this one. And maybe <laughs> the community can help us on this. Yeah. Hmm. It's not possible. It's, it's, it's very rare that we're not able to answer a question. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard you not answer a question, Shane. Actually, no, I take that back. I don't think I've ever heard you acknowledge that you can't answer a question. Yep. Also in this live stream, they talked about player-owned content that was in the survey in particular, uh, that this will be covered in the designer diaries. And they want player-owned content to effectively be content that players can make progression to, towards and is an extension of the character, can use it to grow your character out. Examples of this are the farm, Anacronia base camp, miscellanea, ports, and they say 70% of new player owned content would be additions to existing content. And See, did you like how they explained it that it wouldn't necessarily mean that it's instanced? Like, I thought that was a big, um, that was a big point that they brought up. Yeah. That definitely changed, that would that have changed, changed, changed my perspective on out. it too. Exactly. And, and did you and, also and, catch that he said yes. that we're going to maybe even consider dropping the term player owned from it? Yeah, I because I, I mean that's kind of an important. Um, I mean, I wish they had said that before. Because everything the, uh, I saw in the survey that was player owned, I took in the mold of player owned ports. Right, right, and I like the way they were describing it. I'm like, okay, that stuff it sounds pretty good. Now, I didn't like the way that they were kind of comparing it to a skill because I don't think it's anywhere near the same kind of thing. It's not the same kind of grind. Um, but I like the way that they were describing it. Um, yeah. And hey, a player on town. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Now that you see uh, it in that perspective, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Um, alchemical items. They said of the three that were added, Grace of the Elves was the most popular. They could look into adding more alchemical items to keep the value of clue scrolls up. 
I don't know what no. those are. But here's, um, here's the Grace of the Elves. Yeah, I don't what? know what that is. The, you have one. What? You have a Grace of the Elves amulet, don't you? It's the Skilling amulet. Yeah, I have no idea what that is, Chief. I thought you bought one of those with your Luck of the Dwarves. You can it, you can add your porters to it, and it's automatic porter. It, um, My it what? There and, it banks your items. <laughs> yeah, it banks your items. Oh, that thing. It gives yeah, you extra you um, Saren spirits that have a chance at giving you access to the rare drop table. Yeah, um, I don't know what those are yeah, either. Yeah, get, get a Grace of the Owls. It's really good. Really good. How many? I don't know what it's worth right now. Uh, last I picked one up was like 30 mil. I got one for my... You might have account. mentioned it, but I just dumped all of my money into Herb Lore. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely pick one up when you have the chance. I was born now announcing that I'm taking donations. <laughs> um, okay. Osborne also said that he'd like to do remastered cities and a PVM hub. And once again, he described no. the PVM hub completely different compared to what it was. He described it as a place to learn about PVM, receive tutorials, gain insight on bossing, and use it as a way to access all the different bosses. And it would be a way for somebody to get into bossing. Stop remastering cities. Yeah. I, of them like, I, I would like to see some work done in that area. But here's my question, Shane. Those don't sound like little tiny updates. Those sound like medium and large updates to me, and they just got done saying we don't want to do that. So I'm really confused. Maybe it's that they don't want to go through the entire process of mining and smithing again with scrapping multiple designs and player beta tests. Because Anachronia started work in November last year. Uh Uh-huh. And that's a massive update. Right, but no one was going to be, like, pissy if it didn't land right. Right, Right. and if you remaster a city, that could definitely happen. Right. So, I mean, I I just... See, that's what I mean when I'm I'm saying, like, I'm, I'm hearing... I'm hearing two different things um, at the at the same time and I, I don't know which one we're supposed to believe yeah I would love to, I would love to see this player own stuff and um, I mean alchemical I think they're right they hit the nail on the head with that one because I don't know anyone that uses the uh, what is the passage of the abyss or the ingenuity of humans so yeah I mean we got room there but even that wasn't a small update. Yeah, and you know that was a Mod Timbo update, and those always come out nice. Ah, uh, he's the man when it comes to that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's going to be a whole series of designer diaries starting this Friday, um, diving into the new team layout and the episodic content team aimed towards bringing content towards the players and nailing down a specific content schedule. So what comes to mind with that is Anachronia. I don't really want to comment much more on that until I see the designer diary. That's supposed to be like what next week? Uh, tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. Excuse me. Um, player own farm changes. They say it's still a general overall nerf. They called it last time seventy percent nerf. This time fifty percent nerf. Uh, let me just get to the finish. To, to finish this off before you unleash your fury on me. Um, <laughs> health and happiness will play a role. All bonus XP will now work on top of it. This aim of this is to allow players oriented around efficiency to get higher XP rates if your animals are happy and well fed. The old feeding changes are gone. Right now, animals um, eat food once every two hours, chance to eat food once every two hours. They're going to be making that uh, one food per animal for every, every hour now, so it's going to be twice as much food, not the extravagant amount that it was previously, so that's good. Breeding changes are going to be addressed because, quite frankly, too many animals in game, and I think we all know that after uh, the month of August, looking at the just sheer amount that came in through the Anachronia Summer Escape event with the breeding changes there. 
breeding rates and non-breeding pens are going to be modified based on the size of the pen so that small will take 50% longer, medium two times as long, large three times as long. The collector will also be modified to hold only uh, 10 of each animal type. Increased shiny trait chances to be twice as effective if you're going for royal dragons and traits will be passed on more easily through breeding and heredity so this means that shiny animals are going to be easier to get in the long run and with this they're buffing the amount of xp that shiny animals give to give 25 percent xp more than the standard variant and beans haven't changed at all and i'm going to say that i can fully get on board with these changes to the player owned farm yeah i, I figured you'd be uh the reason why i love these changes is because one it will either let you set up your farm to focus on breeding and if you want to set it to focus on breeding you set your breeding pen to focus to a state that you got traits to foster good breeding then you set up all your dragons and your other pens with the um farm hands so that they don't grow past adolescence you go sell adolescent dragons to people People will buy the adolescent dragons, sell them for beans, use the beans to get fast farming XP. And that's where I see the money in player-owned farms after this. See, you always look at it like that, yeah. And I, and I saw it as, well, we just made it more of a buyable so the rich can get richer or afford to get it done quicker. Um, because, I mean, that's really what happened, right? I mean, if you got the money to buy animals, then you're fine. Yeah. Nothing changed for you. No big deal. Um, I think you might as well not really have a breeding chance in the other pens if it's going to take three times as long. Because I, I, I just think that's going to be really, really. Yeah, I'll slow. probably be stopping zygomites with this. Yeah. Um, look, the one part that I I thought was more called for than anything else was the XP. I didn't actually mine that part. But instead of nerfing that harder, they, they eased up on the XP. And, so you'll be able to get more XP from it now. Yeah, which was never something that was a concern to begin with. It was the uh, upkeep and stuff that was a bigger question, which it's better. It's better than the, than the initial thing, um, the initial proposal. But... Um, I did make some financial advisements on that first doc. Yeah. So we'll have to see how that goes. See if look, if 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 the POF had came out with the with what they are proposing now. It'd be fine. Um it would be fine because it actually we, came we out one year ago it. this week. Right. But it's hard when you really like something and it's doing you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's just like I said, it, it's different because I've never been in the, the player on farm for the experience. So, um, yeah, I'm just not a fan of this. I'm still I, not sure if it's going to help seeds. I will say that. Shane, nothing's going to help seeds. You know what I mean? Can, can we help dragon armor? <laughs> can we? Can we bring? Can we make dragon armor great again? Can we make it expensive? I remember when I started, it was 30 mil. Yeah, I have plate. gotten several KQ drops. So can we <laughs> I, make I know. The, I just I don't understand the, like, the propping up of a single commodity when, it's, when time has moved on and so is the game. Yeah, you actually wrote an Informer article about that once upon a time. Yeah. So. And they aim to have this out within a few weeks. They also did mention their one special day event. Uh, they had Mod Rich on stream, who is the uh, Jagex ambassador to special effect for the week leading up to RuneFest. One special day is actually on October 4th, but for the week leading up to RuneFest, there will be two free items on Solomon's General Store, and all money spent on the store that entire week will be donated to special effect. I think that's awesome. This was the best awesome. part of the stream. Yeah, I'm so happy that they um, they keep... Some- supporting special effect the way that they do um you know for all the for all the stuff that that frustrates us um there's always you know they they do good things too and this is definitely um 
a highlight for me. It's, it's a good, very good thing. I couldn't, can't say enough about it. Yeah, probably make a Solomon's General Store purchase that week. I think that'd be a good thing for everybody to do. For sure. You know what? Uh, get you some uh, some keeps, keepsake keys. You can always use them. You never know when you're going to get that next 120K. Um, you know, you can get you I can keep get all kinds uh, of fun shiny... Stuff. Uh, untrimmed green farming cape with that. Oh, we'll be getting yeah, one of those soon. Could. We'll be getting one of those soon as well. You know, get, go get you a legendary pet if you uh, don't have one. It's, they're like the best thing ever. So, yeah. Spend some money at Solomon. Did you end week. up picking up one of those legendary pets there, Earth? No, they're, so they're $20. Oh, they're so worth it. Dude, they're, they're worth every penny. Every penny. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Sell me on it right now. Dude, it picks everything up for you. You can be as lazy as you want. Everything? I thought there was everything. a cooldown. It picks up everything for me that I have it checked off to, to pick up. I mean, when... Okay, look. In conjunction with all of your other things, um, like, you know, like I'm running the uh, spring cleaner and... Yeah, gold accumulator, that kind of stuff. But yeah, no, it, it picks up, it, it picks up all kinds of stuff for you. Like, um, you don't have to worry about having some kind of special Slayer equipment on you if you're trying to kill. You know, if you get like a gargoyle assignment or something, you just want to be in and out. Well, can... I mean, I've already got that on my tool belt and the Slayer. Oh, that is an ability that you can unlock with points now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It always. Um, well, is it always there? Okay. Yep. Um, do you like to go to your house and fix your weapons, or would you rather do that on the fly? I like going to my house, because I like going. I like feeling like it's useful. <laughs> That's true. Every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. That, that is, yeah, that dun, and the, uh, dun, that and the dun, gilded dun, altar. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I don't know, man. I love my pet because it picks stuff up for me. That's That's my... It's my thing. That's reasonable. All right. Uh, just recapping in the at the tail end of the live stream, they did mention the RuneFest schedule, so that is out. I did include a link to that in the show notes. They also did say that there was no updates pushed back so that they could come out after RuneFest. I know that's one thing that uh, the Cambridge mob will have words to say <laughs> on. Yeah, they, they're holding them back, man. They're sandbagging us. And I think the last thing to mention in the RS News section is that Portable Vic is now permanent. You can get a permanent Portable Vic with a bond. This is a remember, field cool. testing. But now do you, do you remember when, that, when, we, when this was first tested I, and everyone's like, Oh, they're all part of a Vic. Ah. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, you, you watch. I was like, Everyone says they hate it, and everyone's going to buy it, and they're going to make it permanent. They wouldn't have made it permanent if everyone hadn't bought it. So whether you admit it or not, you got one of the little tokens in your bank. Yeah, definitely. And it's good. Why shouldn't you be able to use your bonus XP for what you want? I mean, really. Yeah, you shouldn't need to you wait paid, around you paid for, it. for that. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, so before we move on to our listener question, I'll just take a moment to thank our wonderful Patreon supporters this week for this episode and everything that they enable us to do this week. I'd like to thank Arvids L, Brock H, Cass, Darren L, Diana, Kyle, Logan H, Ripith, Sam W, Tom V. Thank you all of you for your support and everything that uh, you guys contribute to the Patreon side of this. We do have a fresh monthly bid on the way for you guys tomorrow, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. That's a deep dive into the RuneScape settings. And in case you're wondering what all this is about, you can check that out at patreon.com slash rsbnb. We do our monthly bid. We also have our monthly roundtable discussions that we do in the middle of every month. It's a discussion about Everything and anything RuneScape related. It's just a bunch of us sitting talking about RuneScape. And we ended up talking about the archaeology skill last time, which yeah, probably isn't real, fun. but it was a, just a fun way to kind of dive deep and think about what might be possible if that were Yeah, I mean, 
because Shane doesn't let us like speculate and use our imagination and stuff. So, yeah, the round table is great for that. Yeah. And, of course, we also have Inside RSBNB Update interviews with some of our hosts and production teams. So if you want more of all this, you can find that at patreon.com slash RSBNB. You can join up for as little as a dollar a month. You do that, you get a mention in the show notes, early access to the notes. You can join in those roundtable discussions, vote for topics on the monthly bid, and you also, of course, do help fund the cost of hosting and production of RSBNB Update. For $3 a month, you receive a special VIP rank on Discord and a mention on the podcast at the start of the month, as well as high-quality stereo AAC versions of the show. And for $5 a month, you get a special shout-out every week and exclusive access to the outtakes that we use for the clip show at the end of the year. And you can learn more about this at patreon.com slash RSBNB, including 277 Patreon only posts. I can't believe we're up to that number. We've been doing Patreon for over a year now. Wow. That was monthly bit That's 14 awesome. that we did. So, patreon.com slash RSBNB. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, guys. All right. So, question from Sunset Fish Why do you still play? Is the game still magical to you? Or are you like me, just too impatient to learn a new MMORPG? So I guess I should answer this as someone who has come back. Um, Please. I think it's still got that um, that magic feel to it. I don't know if it's just because it's what I played and if I would get that with another game. but Or like if I could have gotten it with another game, I mean. But... Um, it just, there's nothing quite like it that I've found, and that's what um, a lot of my friends who played it when they were younger, too, have said. Like, they still come back to it. It's been 15 years since I started playing, and I'm still playing it. Like, there's something special about it, I think, at least for me. I'm going to completely agree with everything that you just said. And it comes back to that hook. And, you know, we talked about this last month during Dungeoneering Week and before that, is that, isn't it ironic that the first thing that got us all together, we're reviewing and going back to as one of our nightly games 15 years later? Mm hmm. I don't know if I'd use ironic, but, you know. Well, I didn't expect us to bring the people back that we did. Yeah. So, and, you know, I, I think it also comes down to community as well as the people around us immediately. The communities in RSBNB and Clan, Clan Quest, two very good communities online. So that has an impact in it too. And I appreciate everybody who signs up on that recruitment form and mentions the podcast because as far as I know, this is the only podcast that talks about Clan Quest. There's been, I think, three or four of you in the last two weeks that have said that. So thank you very much on that. And, you know, it on the impatient side, I think RuneScape is just that. It's nice and simple, which is good. If you want it to be, of course. Simple. Well, I mean, once you figure it out, right? There's nothing more simple than going to go woodcutting. <laughs> there you go. And there you go. Yeah, once you figure it out. You know, I mean, obviously I think I think there's uh, we all have a love for the for the game or we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing this right now, right? Um and even when even when we disagree with decisions or this or that, it's because we love the game. It's because we're passionate about it. Um that we care enough to even have an opinion you know what i mean like um i don't think we're yeah, too be here at 11 p.m on a <laughs> thursday night yes exactly you know where I, I don't think we're we're necessarily the keyboard kind of cowboy people it's just just trolls for fun like when we say stuff it's because we're, we're passionate about the game that being said uh runescape kind of reminds me of like a marriage like you know there are times when it's magical and you're going out to dinner and you have a date night 
and you just all you know <laughs> but there are also times when it's been 15 years and you're sitting on the couch watching tv and that's okay that's okay like there's an ebb and a flow to it like i don't you don't always have to be totally fired up about it um you can play and just you know play um and i'm saying this is someone that plays a lot of different games you know i mean i i I play other MMOs. I play a lot of other games. Um, I mean, and I'm into everything from retro gaming to VR type of, you know what I mean? Like you, you name it. Um, but yeah, there's something, there's something that is special about this game. Cause even though like there are things that I like in ESO way more than, than, than I like, in RuneScape, I like the way that they do this or that they do that. Um, I still come back and I still play RuneScape. You know, um, I'm, you know, I'm playing RuneScape now. So <laughs> it's like, you know, there, there's always, there's just, you always come back. You know, I mean, it's like I try to get out and they pull me back in. Mm-hmm. It's the yeah, the amount of people on my friends list right. who said they were quitting at one point but inevitably come back is a pretty high number. Yeah, yeah I mean, you always come back. Yeah. <laughs> you always come back. Thank you, Sunset Fish. That's a really great question. I'm glad you sent that in, especially this week. If you guys want to send your own questions in, email them to questions at rsbnb.com or you can leave us a DM on Twitter or at mention at, at rsbnb and we take your questions there too. So moving into tech news this week, Samsung is canceling all Galaxy Fold pre-orders so that it can, quote, rethink the entire consumer experience. (laughs) Consumers will also get a $250 store credit as a consolation. Instead of their money? I mean, I would assume that they would give a full refund. Yeah, you would get your money back with that. that. So otherwise, that's a... Uh, bait and switch. It's yeah, tough. I was like, whoa, that's rough. So they fixed the phone, then they confirmed release dates for it. But if you ordered it before, you are probably out of luck because they're emailing pre- pretty much all the customers who pre-ordered. And they're saying they want to rethink that consumer experience. And with that, Samsung actually confirmed that the company is indeed doing that. And what's more with this is that the release date for this was supposed to be later this month, but it's just, poof, gone. Well, it was a bad idea to begin with. The old Jagex. It was just just a bad, I mean, it's just a bad concept, bad idea. (laughs) And I, I think we've all moved beyond the point where we want a phone that's, you know, one and a half centimeters thick, because that's what this yeah, was when it was folded up. You're gonna put that in. You need a holster. <laughs> like, one and a half <laughs> centimeters. That's what it looks like. Like half an inch. I don't know if you Americans use that metric measuring system like Hold that. On. We can get a damn tape measure. Don't use your damn commie unit. Oh, let me let me let me break it down for you. It's just a smidgen more than a than a. Oh, it's yeah, more it's, than one and a half this centimeters. This damn tape measure only has inches. <laughs> it actually looks more Hold like on, an inch. Let me get a scale rule. That one. Yeah, it looks it looks like an inch. For goodness sakes, how thick it is. It's no wonder I mean, it was canceled. a solid canceled. inch, but like... Uh, I don't, I don't know. know. We, we, could have, we could have predicted this when it, when it first came out, right? Yeah, I thought it was a dumb idea. So, here we are. The money speaks. They had technical problems. Samsung is giving it back, and so much so that they feel they need to say sorry to everybody who ordered it and giving them $250 for a Samsung store. I mean, what are they going to do other than that? Like, Give that's... them a $250 voucher for the Apple store. Oh, yeah. To their competitors. Ah, uh, yes. 
I'm sorry, <laughs> but I just will never buy a Samsung mobile device. That's what I use. I know. Love it. I know, but you use the one that's not all glossy and shiny and stuff. You know that... No, no, hear me out, but you could buy that too. I know. I know, but I prefer not to do Samsung. Why? I just don't. Because back in the day when Android first came out, they had a really piss poor Android experience on there. And it wasn't yeah, until Google. Yeah, and it's now the best one. I think Google has the best one with their vanilla Android experience. It's too bubbly. Okay. And, you know, I wouldn't be saying this unless I had actually used a Android briefly. I, I did. Who? I did have. How long? I did have, you know, probably a half hour plus with Sirion's Pixel last year. He let you use his phone for that long? Oh, yeah. I was in charge of navigating and whatnot with it. Oh, God. Yeah. I must really trust you then. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways. I can't believe you let you touch it and everything. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Android, Android 10 has also been released this week. With uh, the Pixel, we'll be getting it first because, of course, that is Google's flagship device. And with that, Android 10 is, we talked about, their rebrand away from Q. Alongside 10 comes uh, the dark mode feature, which iOS is also getting this year. They're also improving notifications and hold what... up hold up y'all don't have a dark mode yet no it's coming with ios 13 in a few weeks <laughs> google has the best of phone experience mine's had that since launch <laughs> see and this is the thing i don't feel like i need a dark mode and i feel what? like i don't feel like i need things that the os doesn't give me I really would appreciate a dark mode. That would yeah, be it would be really good from an accessibility feature, right? <laughs> yeah. I wonder, do you think you'd still run, you'd still have to run with your screen inverted, though, because websites would still appear white. Oh, would they? Yeah, oh. they would. Uh, okay. yeah. Alongside the improved notifications, including smart replies, um, which is one of the Gmail type features that's percolating up towards larger Android is something they're calling Project Mainline, which allows for large portions of the operating system to be updated through the Google Play Store, as in making it more modular so that they don't need to update the entire operating system on this front and it allows them to ship security updates more quickly. And with this, OEMs are actually going to be able to carry these updates forward, which is something that Android had lagged behind on the past. And this is good for everybody's sanity, both from a user experience perspective and a security perspective as well. So I think Android 10 is a good release from what I've read and, you know, just in general, having a look at this and the changes that are being made to it improve some of the key features too. We'll have to see what we're saying in a couple of weeks when iOS 13 comes out and where that's at, but uh, it wouldn't it be fair to compare apples to oranges, literally, I guess. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't Get actually intended. Stage. It just came out. Get off the stage. Oh. Well, if that wasn't good enough for you, oh. Facebook is also launching their dating platform. Uh, alongside Instagram uh, integration. How do you, how you want to bet Facebook this one up? They're going to somehow. How do you think they're going to do it? Shane, you're the expert here. Will they release nudes to the world? Uh, will they let everyone's data... Oh, nope, they've already done that. Never mind. Um... Hmm. They'll probably send a friend notification, or they'll probably send notification that you're talking to so and so, and you're gonna be like, "Oh no!" <laughs> like, 
I don't preclude any of that from happening. And <laughs> Neither do I. In terms of what Facebook aims to do, they want to leverage the company's deep insight into people's personal data to deliver better matches than rival dating apps like Tinder, Bimble, Match, and others. Bimble? 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 What's that, Shane? Oh, sorry. I mean Bumble. Oh, I never – I've never heard of Sorry, them. I, yeah. I swapped the I from Tinder into Bumble. I don't even know what Bumble is, but all right. I think you're thinking of the word bimbo, shit. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's what was in your head. In any case, Instagram <laughs> posts will be integrated within the dating profile, and their Instagram followers will be, added, be able to be added to their, quote, Secret crush list in addition to Facebook friends. Oh, that's going to get out. That's that's bad. That is bad news. Mm -hmm. They'll also be able to select which Facebook or Instagram stories that will get added to the dating profile. And Facebook feels that they have the unique knowledge to be able to look into and leverage their users' data in order to provide the best dating match that they can. By reconnecting you with your third grade flame. Maybe. And they say for tool for connecting people who aren't just friends or family. <sighs> so I guess older people must not use the Tinder thing, huh? Well, probably not. Cause it wasn't around. That was, yeah. And for everyone wondering, dating is, of course, an opt-in experience. What? That's what it says. Dating is an opt-in experience on the Facebook app. Not everybody is going to be included in this. Oh, I thought you just meant, like, in general. And I was like, yes? What are you on about? <laughs> they also say it will be a different group of contacts than your standard Facebook friends. So there won't be any crossover well, between them. You know, when I look at Mark Zuckerberg, I think pimp. Yeah, that guy knows the ladies. I bet he could I bet he could fix everybody up. He's probably one hell of a matchmaker. Look at him. Yep. Doubt. And I think that's a good place to leave this piece of tech news at. So hopefully this has proven ah, good. useful. We made Shane uncomfortable. Well done. <sighs> moving on, there, moving right? on into other things. Hell yeah, right. We do have our two skill of the month competitions for September to announce. They are woodcutting and mining. It's worth noting we haven't had a mining skill of the month since before the mining and smithing rework. So that one's going to be interesting to watch. And the woodcutting yeah. one, I think, is just nice and laid back. So... You can sign up at rsbnb.com slash skotm. Woodcutting competition starts on the 13th, and the mining competition starts on the 20th, and each of them run for seven days. So rsbnb.com slash skotm. And there will be prizes on offer, too. Ooh, prizes. Mm-hmm. I believe we have some nice achievements of the week, so let's get started with these ones. I believe Earth has the first batch. But Dennis had those. No, he's got the last one. No, I've got the last ones. Okay. Uh, Jamandy52 got 200 million farming XP on September 4th. Lord Dustia got 120 defense and constitution also on September 4th. And Yahoo got 99 smithing on September 4th. Nicely done. Jingles Jr. got 120 Invention on September 4th as well. Zach Master got 99 Construction on September 3rd. Rolla Dude 540 got 99 Mining on September 2nd. And Ripith got 99 Farming on September 1st. Well done. Then we had Madhouse C with 99 uh, Constitution on September 1st. We have <laughs> Sax. Pilier. That's what we're going to do. Go with mm -hmm. 99 Divination on September 1st. We have Hondors. 
with 99 Slayer on August 31st, and Wiki86 with 99 Cooking on August 30th. Nicely done, everyone. Good job. Way to go. All right. Pick of the week. I believe we should hand this off to Earth. So what have you got for pick of the week this week? So my pick is... uh... I actually had to get a new car pretty recently, um, because my old one, uh, after 12 years and got me all the way through college, uh, it was my dad's before that, um, it was just its time, cost more to repair than to sell, so I had to do that, was really sad. Um, but my new car that I got, uh, is a 2019 Ford Escape. Um, and I really love it. Um, some of the, I mean, of course this is, you know, something that y'all are going to go out and purchase on a whim. You're not Uh, the first person to do a car as pick of the week. uh, Am I not? Really? Dave? Uh, Brad. Really? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, um, so (laughs) some neat features that it has. Um, my mom has an older, like 2015, 16 Ford Explorer. And the biggest thing I was dreading about this new car was the sink, which is like their Bluetooth all in one thing. The new sink three, is fantastic because hers has like maps and the weather and just everything. You don't see a co-pilot operator. Obnoxious, you do, and it's obnoxious. And it had no buttons. This car, physical buttons as well as a touch screen, and all of the maps and weather and shit. It can link to apps on your phone. And get it through that. Like, you can link it with Waze if you use that. And, like, that's what it'll use. Um, instead of having all of that built into there. Um, and I've been really, really pleased with it. That's just... And, I mean, driving? Um, I didn't think there'd be that much of a difference. But, like, when I drove my old car after I got the new one... Um, I drove it, and I was like, oh my god, it is night and day between these two cars. Um, and my new one also has adaptive cruise control and, uh, something that's called a lane keeping system. So, like, say you set it to 75 on the interstate, and the person in front of you is going 75, but then they slow down a little bit to 70. My car will automatically take that down to 70, and you can change the distance at which you want to stay from them. In the lane-keeping system, if you are in the... uh, and you're in a lane, and then you start to drift to the side, you can have it either assist or alert you. And um, if it alerts you, it'll shake the wheel, or like vibrate the wheel, and you're like, oh, shit. And then you do that, or it just does it. Um, And see, this is the way automation gets into the car. We're not going straight up to self-driving cars. We're getting there slowly but surely. And see, I like this because I recently drove through Atlanta in my new car, um, and like, I was in full control of the car. But when I'm driving through, like, North Georgia, and it's just, you know, I'm not changing lanes. I'm not really speeding up or slowing down that much. I pop that... um, adaptive cruise control and lane keeping system on like it just makes the drive so much easier and on my way to work in the morning which is through back roads uh or it's just on a highway not even the interstate except for 
the very end where there's a bunch of curves, I could probably just take my hands off of the wheel and it would drive itself there. I would never be comfortable with that. No. But like, no. I think this is a good, um, it's a good step forward. Hybrid between. Um, oh, and I forgot something else. Um, I think this is a good middle ground between self-driving. I like assisted, augmented. I don't not comfortable because at any point I can take over full control. Um, self-driving cars make me uncomfortable. Does it have uh, the thing where it can uh, self-park itself? Or did they abandon that feature? Why would anyone need that? As I've seen videos in the past <laughs> where they had these self, self-parking self Ford cars and it rear-ended the one in front of I think the advanced models have that. Um, but, oh, another neat thing that mine has... I'm at a stoplight, and assuming that the temperature inside is like, it's 90 degrees, so it doesn't always do it unless the car's been running a while, but it'll, you're sitting at a stoplight, it'll turn the engine off. What? Save gas. Wow. And then it has a, it's like a quick start thing, so you ease up on the brake pedal like you're going forward, and it starts the engine up. What, Shane? Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's really neat. I wonder how that would work in the colder climates where it takes longer to start. Um, so it won't do it if like it won't do it like if it's too hot, maybe if it's too cold. I don't know about that. Um, if the battery current or whatever right. is okay. not high enough. So, like, it doesn't do it all the time. But, like, if the conditions are right, it'll do it. So. All right. Obviously, you can turn it off. Right. So, that is that is all. Very nice. And, you know, I think that's 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 an interesting pick of the week. And I said you're not the first person to do that. And I think one of the other good benefits of that make and model is, of course, that it is made in the USA. Hell yeah, brother. And it's completely different than a Nissan Leaf, which Brad had as, as his pick of the week when he was on the show last time. So what have we been up to? Classic, uh, Brad. Yeah, I know. What have we been up to? Let's start with uh, Tannis. What have you been up to on RS? Uh, collecting charms, man. Uh, that's, but I've had, I've, I haven't had a lot of RS time this week. I've had a lot of RL stuff going on. Um, so yeah, I've been collecting charms uh, just in my player-owned dungeon because I put uh, Dagonos down there so I can collect crimsons. And, oh, good. Um, what about water fans? Yeah. Um, you know that was always my go-to. I put them in here first, but the the dags are actually um, a little better in my opinion. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, yeah, because water fiends. I mean. <sighs> I don't know. The, the, the thing with the Dagonoff is you can you can just put on, like, you can buy, like, a, te- a set of, like, Tetsu that's unaugmented and all that stuff. I mean, you can get out of there for, like, probably five mil, right? You just put that on, go down there with your scythe, and just let it run. You're never going to get hit or hurt. Just use your Demonheim um, necklace with your bone crusher and run your prayers and you're good and you can't necessarily do that as easy with water right. fiends it's right different kind of a setup so yeah all right good uh you earth um hmm, what have i been doing on rs uh just some wood cutting oh yeah i got the wood cutting pet just randomly the other day Oh my god! Well, Ooh, you have better luck getting these pets than i do because you are not 99 when you're getting these yeah, no, I don't have um, a pet for any of the 99 skills I have. <laughs> oh, I also got 99 magic since I've last been on the show. So that was, at least I think, but that was June 30th, so. Yeah, it's a long time, but good to hear, and good to hear that progress is being made. It really was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 
As for me this week, I completed the Tier 3 Player Lodge in Anachronia. I'm debating what to put for the worldwide skill cape effect on there. I'm thinking of putting the defense cape perk there and removing that one from the max cape. That's not a bad idea. But then this question of what else do you put on the max cape? I have the farming one. I had the divination one, but the divination one might be able to go. So we have four perk slots now that we can put in. The farming one is staying and the defense one is going on the cape stand. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. What are your favorite max, max cape perks, Tennis? Um, well, I have defense and... Uh... I had the divination. Oh, Slayer. Yeah, that's a big one for me. All right. Because Slayer won mainly just just for the teleports, right? No, it's so that I can um, get a chance to pick my task. Oh, the 120 Slayer cape, Burke. Yeah. Ah, uh okay. Fair enough. Yeah, well, you think I'm a noob? (laughs) See, I don't know. I have no idea because of that. (laughs) Um, And, of course, in relation to last week's reveal on the farming alternate account that is progressing amazingly in terms of the amount of xp when i wrote that article last week i was at 8.7 million farming xp and 94 farming i am currently 500k away from 98 farming in a week and a half well you might only have another week and a half so I honestly don't I'll care. Do it. I honestly don't care if I don't get it before then. I mean, this has gone fast enough as it is. So, I mean, it's it's just absolutely absurd the amount of XP that was coming in from this thing. So, we'll see what we wind up doing on that. And you know, I, as I said, it's going to be a it's a question of finding a sustainable way to you know fork over the two bonds a month to keep membership going on that either through that account or through the main one and seeing if that's something that can possibly go forward and do other uh skilling 99s after that but that's going to be a wait and see well, decision well you just answered that question shane um focus it on shinies that's what efficient um skillers are going to be using so there we go. The more shinies go. you sell, the better you're going, you know? And can you imagine what some of these are going to sell for on the first day after the nerf? Yeah, they're going to sell good, A shiny man. adolescent or even a- adult royal dragon breeding pair. <laughs> yeah. Several. So mm-hmm. that's what my main farm has been going for. And I'm still waiting for my three traded royal dragon. I have not got that yet. My three traded female royal dragon. I got the male. I just need the female. So, but aside from that, not too much else. So I think we could pretty much wrap this episode of RSBNB update up. Unless you guys have anything else. No man, I, we we covered more than I even anticipated. All righty. Yeah, I'm good. Well then, if you guys want to subscribe to the show, you can do that on any number of podcast listeners out there. Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, and Google Podcasts. And new this week is Spotify. The show is on Spotify, so if Spotify is your default music player, just uh, visit update.rsbnb.com and tap that Spotify button, and you'll be able to be kicked into the Spotify app to subscribe to RSBNB Update there and have the podcast delivered directly to you but we also do have options for pocket cast stitcher and you can even subscribe on youtube at youtube.com slash rsbnb if you want the video version so with that being said we'll see you guys next week for another episode of rsbnb update and be sure to guest in that friends chat bits bites as well if you want to chat with us while you're playing the game so see you next week everyone take care see ya bye